All right, so I just did a Facebook Live here a little while ago and said that Maddie and I were fixing to stop at Whataburger and uh, head on out to West Texas to go see if we can kill some axis deer. And that's where we're heading now. And there she is, ladies and gentlemen. That's my partner, sound asleep. Anyway, then she's resting up so she can uh, be on the lookout while I'm taking my nap in the deer blind. Well, we wound up, we went to the Texas Hill Cutters where we are now. And uh, so far the Axis deer are winning big time, aren't they? Yeah, I've never heard. We saw one yesterday. It was a little nub and buck. And uh, I don't know, he barked at us, I guess that's what you call it. Sounded like a bullfrog. I've never heard that before. This is my first time hunting Axis. We wound up, uh, we've had uh, some turkeys come by and lots of whitetail. I mean, there's lots of whitetail, but uh, so far the Axis are uh, uh, no show other than that one little guy that came by last night. So right now Maddie said that she's hungry. What are you gonna, what are we doing right now? Tell everybody what we're fixing to go do. We're fixing to go get a Claritin because my allergies are acting up and then we're making some chorizo and eggs. So. Yeah, so we're fixing to go to town and uh, get some allergy medicine and then head to get some breakfast and then take a much needed what? Siesta. Siesta blonde. I'll tell you what, we've been putting in some long hours so it's time to catch up and take a little nap. But, uh, we'll be back at it probably at a different place this afternoon. <sighs> Hopefully the next is still make a mistake. Come on, let's go. Come on. Yeah, hop up there. Get in. Get in. There's our watchdog. Her name is Chloe, and she's a little over two year old Jack Russell, and she's now Maddie's best friend. <laughs> Chloe. Chloe. Oh, no, and there's Bob. I've known Bob forever. <laughs> well, the weather has turned south. Um, we had a big norther come in today we have changed locations and as you can see maddie's bundled up i've got my jacket on now and uh the wind is strong out of the north uh we were not expecting this i'll put it that way they're talking about weather being in the 80s on saturday but right now it is cold and what do we do in the deer blind when we're waiting a lot of times we'll be doing that i've got the camera on it's taking a time lapse it'll turn out pretty but it's cold nasty but I kind of think of the sunshine we may have some deer show up we just need to get an axis deer in here right Maddie <laughs> what was that what was that I'm hungry hungry I tried to feed you some sausages before we left you wouldn't eat them those sausages were warm in the ice chest for a day and you cooked them in the microwave and they were good Hey, and, and I've had people on the blog say, man, Keith, your diet is awful. Do they really say that? Yeah, there's people on there saying that. Can you believe that? What judgmental people? Judgmental. <laughs> and, and those people that are saying that, I bet you don't like bean burritos either, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. I love bean burritos, though. I think that's right. <laughs> Shh. All right. This morning we got up and we went to the stand. It was... Ooh. Oh shoot! Gracious. Well, look. It was 36 degrees, and uh, we better get this meat off of here. Oh, look at this ribs right Daddy. here. Daddy, look at these ribs right here. We better get them off. It looks done. good. Get them off. Look. All right. Hey, bark there. Oh my God. They're good too. <laughs> get them off. Oh, 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 oh. Don't burn yourself. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Look at that. That right there. If you, if you want to see how we got this, you're more than welcome to log on to highroadhunting.com and actually watch the video where we got this. Isn't that cool? I, I think as a hunter, you know, we, we we love what we do. And, and this is our life. And the cool thing about it is that when we're able to take what we kill and do this with it, it makes it even better. 
All right, we wound up, uh, we spent three days out in West Texas, out in God's country. And uh, anyway, you can see the pillow right there. And for the first time in a long time, you're gonna see Maddie not asleep. <laughs> anyway, tell them about our trip, Maddie. We are empty handed besides our coffees. We hunted hard, the weather was all over the place. It was hot and then it rained and was freezing and then it got hot again and then it was cool this morning. Um, why it's called hunting and people think this is easy and we just go out and sit there and get to kill stuff and hunt for a living and it is all fun and games we're very grateful but some weeks it's like this you're hunting for four days straight and you don't see a single thing and there's no shot opportunities but we did draw blood from something this morning oh gosh tell him maddie he hit a buzzard yeah i hit a buzzard with the pickup so anyway it uh i didn't get something but anyway uh, we're rolling eastbound on Interstate 10, about 85 miles an hour, trying to avoid the troopers. And uh, next stop for me, we're going to stop off at the office. You won't believe how dirty my truck is. I mean, it is about as bad dirty as you can get. So, got to get the office, unload this stuff, wash the truck up, and then uh, probably hook up the bass boat and go fishing. Morning. Morning. Okay, tell everybody what we're doing. We're going to Choke Canyon, do a little bit of fishing this morning. And we had to stop and get uh, breakfast at Awadabagar. Let me show you the rig here. This is Colton's, this is not mine. Okay, there's a, a beautiful bass boat. I used to have one just like it many, many moons ago. And then I want to show you this truck. Now, I don't know about y'all, but uh, everybody's probably got a favorite truck. But that right there is a 2007 Dodge Ram with a 5.9 Cummins in it. Tell them about it, Colton. It's got 43,000 miles. I bought it from a guy who's about 75 years old, couldn't get in and out of the truck anymore. And uh, I just had to get it. Like, it's it's in perfect shape. Anyway, so we're uh, heading down. You know, this, <laughs> I know y'all probably look at this vlog and you think, all you do is screw around. I'm thinking, yeah. Okay, well, because all this week wound up, I, I was, uh, almost all this week, I was uh, trying to hunt axes here with Maddie. And then we drove back from Sonora yesterday, and now we're going down to try to punish some uh, fish right now with Colton. So, anyway, we'll see what happens. See what happens. We're going to eat some breakfast right now. All right. Uh, just got done finishing cleaning up a bunch of fish. Huh, oh, Bob? Did what? We got done cleaning up a bunch of fish, didn't we? I made a bunch of fish. We cleaned up 75, and Colton's back over there. Colton was watering the grass, I think. Yep. But uh, anyway, I'm watering my belly. Uh, yeah, Coors Light. What kind of beer do you drink? Cold beer. Over and out. I'm ready to go take a shower now. And for those of y'all wondering what those fish now look like, right here. This is what they look like. Solid fillets they uh anyway they, they come up. we got i don't know we caught 75 fish and if you're wondering if that's a yeti cooler hell no well today is day two of our choke canyon fishing adventure we got colton in the back seat and catfish bob right there and we're heading back to the boat ramp right now and uh, this morning, we are doing a little something different. Last night, we wound up, we, we took Bob back to the house, took a nap, and then uh, Colton and I got some uh, adult beverages and some ice, and we wound up, we went crappie fishing. Or did we go crappie catching? Crappie catching, really. Yeah, crappie catching. We weren't there but an hour or so. We had 12 to 15, including one bass, about two and a half pounds. And uh, anyway, so we're going to try to catch some crappie first thing this morning. And uh, see if those, if we left the fish biting, which I think we did, we're gonna see if we can catch a few of them and then we're gonna go catch some more catfish, hopefully. But we're gonna have a good time. So yesterday we fished till about lunchtime. We had a hundred catfish and we got out here this morning and changed plans. And look at this, decided we'd go for crappie. And we've got a pretty good bunch of crappie going here. And uh, what we're gonna do now we're going to change gears and go for catfish and uh you know years ago when i did a fishing show most of the time it was catch and release especially for black bass but anymore uh, i fish so seldom anymore that 
and I love eating fish. And I love fishing. So I keep them. Okay. Now if I catch a great big old bass, I'm probably gonna let it go. But, you know, great big old bass, so four pounds or better, I'll let it go. But under that, I'm gonna eat them. But we got a good mess of fish going now, and we're gonna stay at it. Hopefully, we can find some more catfish. Having fun, Bob? Having fun, brother. The only thing we forgot to bring was plenty of water. Well, you got plenty of water right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be that thirsty. You, you Every time I drink water like that, it gives me the squirts. <laughs> you need a drink. Are you still rolling on that? Yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> that's why I take Imodium all the time. Uh, Bob is trying to negotiate through this jungle of trees. Take a look at this. This is a This looks like crappie heaven and it is in some spots but This is really catfish heaven. I mean choke canyon if I were to pick one species of fish to go after 12 months out of the year down here on choke canyon if you want to fill up your ice chest and take fish home to your family it'd be catfish. Wouldn't you say Bob? Catfish. That is one of the things this lake is noted for in big bass. But catfish are so easy to catch. I mean, they're they're prolific here. And I got to show you this. This stuff right here, cheese bait. It's called Big Marbs. And uh, I never fished with it till yesterday. But this stuff right here, oh man. Hmm. I mean, it's pretty hairy. It's a, uh, if you took a good close look at it, it's got, seriously, it's, it's pretty hairy. It's got chunks and of chicken guts and blood. Everything, it's uh, an aphrodisiac for catfish. Big monsters. Well, we're heading back to base camp right now. We're done fishing. I mean, I'm tired. But we've had a hell of a great weekend. I don't know what y'all do to relax. I kind of like to know what you do to relax. But for me, fishing is just, it's something I did for so long. And I did it competitively back when I turned my fish. And then I did it competitively, I guess, doing television fishing shows simply because I was competing. I was competing against the fish. And uh, the one thing that I forgot to do when I was doing it competitively is focus on fun. It's the thing that I'm always trying to tell people. The outdoors is fun, you know. I mean, all my mature life, adult life, I've really uh, focused on the outdoors. And I tell people, yeah, we sell lots of stuff in the outdoors, but the most important thing that we sell is supposed to be fun. And uh, if it's not fun, then why the hell would somebody want to do it? So anyway, it kind of got to where for me it was competitive. And it was just re repetitious, you know, go catch fish, catch fish, catch fish. And I know that may sound, how could that not be fun? But the truth of the matter is when you're doing it and you're not doing it with somebody that you love or somebody that you're close to, it's really not as fun as it is when you're doing it with somebody that you love. And so uh, I've had a unbelievable weekend. And this is really nice. And uh, Filthy, dirty, need to get back and shower and shave. We got a whole ice chest full of fish to clean back there. And life is good. And uh, I'd like to know from you, what, what do you do for fun? I mean, and, and do you believe that, that, I mean, fishing or hunting can get so repetitious that it's not fun anymore? Because if we don't keep the fun in it, why in the hell would we want to do it? Anyway, we're going to get back and clean these fish up here and then get cleaned up and relax and uh, maybe fry up some catfish tonight. But all I can do is to tell you, if you haven't gone out with somebody that you love and spent time on the water or out in the woods just connecting with nature and connecting with them and your relationship, you are missing out. You're missing out big time. And life is too short. So if you got any questions or comments, post them down below and we'll see what lies up over this uh, next hill. But uh, all I know is that life is short, and I love life. All right, well, we still have some daylight left, so what the heck? Might as well go to bed really tired tonight. Uh, we're on our home water right now of Lake Dunlap. This is in 35, right up here. And uh, what we're doing, we're going to go out and make some spots so we can come back and catch some crappie later. 
hopefully uh, hopefully catch some weeks down the road. That's what the plan is. What we've got, we've got range cubes right here. Just cattle cubes. And we got some bird giants. We got some rocks and some cord to tie up. So we're gonna make some uh, crappie holes hopefully and come back here later on and kill them. Anyway, we got a since I've been fishing here, I've been fishing here since I was a pup. I mean, since I was a little bitty guy. And uh, I know this river like the back of my hand. This is the Guadalupe River. It's actually called Lake Dunlap. There's a series of lakes down below Canyon Lake. And this is uh, kind of like our home water. My, <coughs> my home is about 300, yeah, not even, 150 yards off of the water down here. And the office is about a half a mile back down over here. So. This is my whole water. Been fishing a long time, and uh, I think this will work. 